competency framework, competencies are a, um, a bit of a munging of knowledge and skills. They're actually typically knowledge, skills, and then also some kind of an attitudinal dimension or kind of behavioral traits that people have. But basically, competencies try to find what does somebody need to know and what are the skills that they need to have to perform the, the a certain specific task associated with the job. So to build out a competency framework, you have to kind of, you have to unpack all that. You have to really get into um, dissecting the jobs, figure out what those are, figure out what are the actual tasks that tend to make up the job, and even that takes some doing, and then figure out within that, what are the skills and the knowledge that drive that, and break that all down into content that actually becomes meaningful, that somebody can, can read and figure out, um, can assess themselves against, or can figure out like ways in which they want to get, they want to improve or get better, or look for those qualities in others. So if you're a manager or you're interviewing, how do you find those qualities when you're looking at other people? Um, a ton of work went into building this competency framework. Uh, it is one of the things I think um, the DAA should be most proud of having gotten done the last year because this is a very robust framework. It was built in a very professional way. It was a significant investment, not just of money, but even more importantly, of time by the board and of a lot of DAA members to really help make this thing good. So there was a core kind of group of 11 people that really shepherded this and sort of owned it. Um, but they built on literally the input of hundreds of people. Hundreds of analytics professionals had input into this, um, as well as like a set of people that we were working with outside consultants that have expertise in building competency frameworks um, and doing that to a very high standard. So competency frameworks that actually can be statistically analyzed to show that they really do differentiate between what one task is or another task. Uh, the, um, the scope of this was primarily U.S., but the content all was reviewed by members in Asia, um, in India, um, and in Europe, so it does have a somewhat you know, global dimension and relevance to it. Um, and really now, it's time to be bringing it out to you. And so the framework was first released in February, and this is something that's DA members. You can go to, this, you can go to the DA website, digitalanalyticsassociation.org. You can download it for free. Um, it's a valuable piece of IP. It's... Um, it's kind of interesting reading. I mean, it, particularly if, if you manage analytics professionals, it's interesting. But most competency frameworks, and I, I speak from some experience here. Remember I mentioned that the marketing community, marketing professional development at Microsoft is part of my organization. So I've got some experience with competency frameworks. Uh, this is the underpinning of a lot of other things that you want to create. The content itself can be, can be a little bit dry. Um, this framework, though, is actually, it's, it's, it's light enough that it really is, it is pretty consumable. Um, so that's something that people have had available since, since February. But what's really interesting now is we're bringing out tools that enable people to get into it. And so my first kind of call to action or thing I'd really like you to sit up and take notice of and think about like, like taking action on for today is around the digital analyst competency framework. So when you have a set of competencies, one of the first things you want to do is enable people to self-assess against those competencies. It is far more interesting to learn about a competency framework by going through a self-assessment than to actually try to read the thing and figure out where it relates to you. Um, what you'd see in the competency framework, if you actually look at it, what you experience when you go through the assessment, is the competency framework identified two broad kinds of, of types of roles in analytics. Uh, there's a set of the roles that are really what we, what we called technical roles, and those are roles that revolve around getting the, like acquiring the data, organizing the data, bringing it in, uh, the, um, the, the tools and the, and the systems that do that. And there's another set of roles that are what are called the analytical track, and those are much more about the what kind of analyses do you do and how do you actually work with the data to get some kind of a business impact from it. Um, and then we found was that, um, was that defining knowledge and skills really seemed to, to gravitate to roughly three levels, an entry level kind of a, of a, of a, of a, of a category of jobs, you know, mid-level where someone has got a few years of experience in their career, they might be starting to manage other analysts. Um, they're definitely acting as a mentor um, and helping to train other, anal other analysts. And then, um, and then senior, where that person is actually leading a team of analytics professionals. And when you look at the competency framework, what you'd see is there's, um, for each level, there's around seven competencies that tend to be common to both tracks. And then it branches out into, here's the additional competencies, usually another six to eight that are specific to analytical or technical. So in total, for any one level, you're dealing with like a dozen to 14 competencies. It's really pretty digestible. And it means it's, you're able to get through this, this, this self-assessment pretty quickly. I mean, I have gone through it numerous times as part of uh, kind of beta testing and shaking it down. It's like a 15 minute exercise. It is really like, it's not a big chunk of time for the return that you would get on it. Now, this is a view of what the analytics of what an actual um, uh, part of the competencies looks like. The things that are in the light gray there, those are where the actual specific competencies. And, the, um, it's, and this is where it starts to get interesting when you look at what's in these competencies and how they're different by job level. So for example, uh, the, um, 
competency around attribution. Through all of these interviews and building this, what it turned out is that competency and attribution really tends to gravitate to entry level. Um, and that was actually, I thought, pretty interesting, that that's a skill set that, in general, like you really want entry level um, and analysts early in their careers to be very solid on. Conversely, when you get to that mid-level, benchmarking is what starts to distinguish the analysts who really perform well there. And at a senior level, uh, the, uh, something I just loved was uh, this, this word prognostication, um, which is, I get kind of a, a foretelling the future comes up numerous times. And, um, and it comes up in connection with people who are leading analytics groups are actually expected um, by, um, you know, by their managers and even their teams to have a sense of where the puck is going. So what technologies are going to matter? What are going to be the big trends? What's going to matter for their business? Um, and just even though that small example is meant to show you how, there are real differences that this thing calls out between how analytics is practiced at different levels. And so when you're thinking about hiring, I mean, you want to obviously be tapped into that. When you're thinking about your own career, though, it's really useful to be able to look kind of side to side and also sort of look up a level and see what are the things that maybe I want to start building in my skill set to advance my career.